What's it like to work with the younger generation on the Chanel front, of course? Um, obviously, it's quite a bonding experience, obviously, down there. Yeah, what look, uh, I mean, one of the one of the endearing things about 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 working with that young cast in, in the Shannara Chronicles was really the fact that, you know, New Zealand is my country, you know, and uh, in, in a way, you know, al is kind of like the already the keeper of the four lands, you know, and, and so when they when they arrived, you know, I, I sort of had to sort of take them kind of like under my wing anyway and, and, and show them around New Zealand and sort of give them a bit of a, because you know, these, these are a young group of actors, you know, who were getting one of, you know, one of their first big break shows and sort of coming over to, to New Zealand and, uh, you know, New Zealand's a long way from, from home for, for, you know, Poppy from England and Ivana from, uh, you know, from Spain and, and Austin from, from America. So, so, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of nice, you know, I, I almost felt like in real life that I was, um, you know, their father, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was a, uh, you know, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Were you familiar with the Shannara series before you got the role? No, not at all. No. no. Have you read the book since, or no. I just tried to keep? Yeah, with the script? yeah. You, you know, I, I kind of. Well, I was intrigued because once we started doing the show, I, I was, I was sort of interested in seeing. Well, well, you know, I, I, I lied. Before we started the show, I, I, I read, uh, you know, the Sword of Shannara. Mm. And uh, you know, I, I got the feeling of, of of how Terry wrote Alan on, mm. you know, and Alan on would always sort of appear like on the page, like, you know, you know, yeah. And uh, but it was kind of funny because you know, I, I you know, and I say funny like it was it was like I remember the first scene uh, working with the director uh, on on discovering Will for the mm. first time. And he was in a bathtub, you know, and, and, and you know, Ivana's character, Eritrea, had stolen the elf stones of him. You know, and um, and there was this moment where I thought it was kind of like I don't know, I, I thought it was like Strider, you know, leaning mm. over the top of Frodo, you know, and lightning bolt, you know, illuminates the hood and this sort of you know, that's what I imagined that scene to be and uh, and the director was like, "Oh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've. But this is going to be comedy. This, this is going to be. This is going to be a funny scene, you know." And I was really struck by that. I was like, "Really? Like, what about the dun 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 dun?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. And he was like, "No, no, no. We've, we've discussed this scene, and we're going to go, you know, this way with it. So, you know, so, so, you know, Austin sort of was, you know, directed to go like, oh, Alan, a druid. Oh, I, you know, my mum told me about a druid, and." Uh, and it was, and, and kind of like you know, it, it set off a different tone, you know, than what I'd, I'd sort of expected at first, you know. But it sort of made it like maybe jovial and jokey and, mm -hmm. and friendly and stuff like that. And uh, you know, it was it was it, it was something, you know. But, but then it was never dun 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 <laughs> with, with, with with that character much because we'd always sort of have this jibe going on, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that, that started up. Um, Am I digging a hole here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, dun, 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 next dun, season, you're just going to get the musical cue. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, but you know, this is this is this is some of the you know this was some of the the way that the show was fashioned for MTV. Yeah. You know. Um, Talking about funny writing, uh, I think you had your own experiences contributing uh, quite a memorable spell to the the series. Uh, can you maybe tell us that story? Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, can I? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. You're allowed to. Rakuf Rathom. <laughs> so what, what happened <laughs> was we had this we had this moment where uh, Ar Ar Arian, Arian, Ar Arian, is that his name? Uh, wait, 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 okay, it was, it was a while ago. Let me let me get this straight. So the the two brothers, right? And uh, Ar is Arian. Help me out here, guys. Come on. <laughs> you're pointing your cameras at me, and you're like, he's waiting for me to put my foot in my mouth. I know what you're like. Uh, Daniel McPherson's character, Arian. 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 Anyway, okay, so. So there's, there's this moment where, you know, the, the young prince was being 
you know, killed by by the Dagdamore, you know, and 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 Alanon was was was, you know, racing across the, I don't know, part of the Four Lands to get there to to to, to save them, and uh, and when he arrived, it was too late, and the, and the Dagdamore had run his sword sword through uh, Daniel McPherson's character, that one. Arian, yeah. Arian, right, <laughs> and and. In the scene, it just said that, that Alanon stood upon the rocky outcrop, witnessing the, the death of, of the young prince, and he sent a shockwave through the ground, you know, to, to, to stop, uh, you know, um, to stop the Dagnamore. Uh, and it, 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 when it came to the moment, it was like Alanon just got up there and went like, mm -hmm. And I thought, oh God, he must surely he must say something here, you know, like rather than just. And so the director said, yeah, 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 it's a good point, but we don't have any dialogue. And I said, okay. Well, the director was like, can, you know, can you come up with something? And I went, okay, sure. And uh, so you know, he, he said, I'm going to go over here and shoot something. You can come up with something. When I come back, we'll shoot it and use whatever dialogue you came up with. So. So I thought, what would Alanon say as he watches the death of this young young prince, you know, and he got there too late. And so the director came back and he was like, okay, uh, have you got a, a line, a spell? And I said, yeah, I got one. And he went, okay, what is it? And I said, just film, I'll, I'll, I'll just break it out, you know. And he went, okay. So he went down and he's going, okay, an action. And I grabbed my staff and I hit the ground. I went, rakuf, rathom. The shockwave went through, and he, the director was like, "Oh, it was good, awesome, awesome. That sounded great. That sounded just like Druid speech." And I was like, "Yeah, cool, eh?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah. Let's do it again. I can't do it again." Rakuf Rathom. Awesome, awesome. That's it. Got it. So we all walked down the hill. And we got into the mini bus that would take us back to the uh, production site, and the director's sitting next to me. and He goes. That, that, that line sounded perfect. I was like, yeah, thanks. And he goes, what was it? Like, you just came up with it? Like, and I said, yeah, it's, it was like, it's motherfucker backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, Alanon gets up and he's like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and funnily enough, I got, I got contacted, like, we had a scene this season on the second season where I was in, in you know, I, I can't, actually I can't tell you what happened, but we're in a very, very bad predicament. And, um, and I broke it out again. You, it's, it's a season two <laughs> repeat of this line. And then they, they know about it, right? But the lady in, Amer in America, when I had to do ADR, you know, I had to do some ADR work, they said, oh, we have to repeat, she sent me this message, that we have to repeat that line that you said, whatever it was, what was it that you said? <laughs> So I sent her this very eloquent email, you know, saying, oh, it's, it's uh, Rakuf Rathon. And if you read it backwards, you'll probably know what it means. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's, it was a very funny moment, you know, just to, just to have that as kind of a bit of a legend behind one of the, one of the spells and a bit of fun on set. <laughs> Talking about mother romances, uh, obviously one of our favorite mother romances is uh, your character on Arrow. And I think fans were so delighted to have you back and to get to continue that story. Looking to the future, what are you most excited about at finally getting to finish out that arc? Well, you know, there's, there's sort of some speculation going on right now about, you know, our Slade's back on Arrow, you know, and then, you know, Joe Manganiello has been, you know, offered to do a, a Deathstroke film, which is great for Joe. Uh, you know, he's, he's a wonderful guy. He's a, I've met him a couple of times and he's just an awesome guy. You know, wonderful physique. He'll, he'll fit a Deathstroke costume amazingly. And, uh, you, you, know, he, uh, you know, he'll have his own take on it, you know, and, 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 and I, I wish him the very best. Uh, you know, he's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, with all that great production quality, you know, what they can bring visually to the character. But I will say, you know, being able to do a character on television and have, have several series to, to flesh out a Slade Wilson, you know, then you can play with a lot of the gray matter. And, uh, you know, we've managed to develop that well for the, for the TV show. but. You know, uh, up on the big screen, there's going to be a new Deathstroke, and uh, you know. So, but between the two, you know, there's always been this sort of ongoing uh, story uh, where Warner Brothers, uh, parent company, 
which is the feature film, um, you know, have, have requested that you know certain elements of Arrow's world uh, mm. be finished. You know, things like you know Deadshot and Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad. All those things were going to be part of of the Arrowverse, but uh, you know, have had to be held back because of the reason of, of, of the film arm wanting to reserve that, you know, for the film. Uh, you know, who knows? That's that's their decision making. That's their properties. You know, they, they know what they're doing in their game. So uh, you know, we just uh, play ball. So you wouldn't say no to a death row, death, death row TV series. Uh, listen, I mean, you know, the speculation of a death row TV series is is uh, uh, you know based upon fan comments that have been going on. You know, the fact that fans want. Would like to see that. I remember somebody, you know, somebody posted it online and, and sent it to my to my uh, Twitter account, and I responded, "Yeah, it'd be cool, you know, but it'd want to be R rated, it'd want to be dark, like you know, like Logan, you know. I, I think you'd, to pay Deathstroke a real service in a TV series, you know, I think you'd want to go darker than anything, you know, like the, the more darker than Daredevil, darker than everything. Maybe even make it a little more international, you know, where where you sort of like a like an international soldier, but you know, and I had these conversations with Mark Guggenheim after the fact, and you know, Mark was very supportive of the idea; thought it was a great idea. You know, we bandied it around a little bit on Twitter, and people like Marv Wolfman weighed in. You know, uh, uh, also uh, uh, um, uh, oh my God, Jeff uh, Jeff Daniels Daniels from uh, the, the Illustrator, uh, the Deathstroke, you know, new Deathstroke series, you know. He, he weighed in, you know, and they, everyone was going, oh, good idea, you know, so so who knows, you know, I mean, it's, at this stage, you know, I guess Warner Brothers is just looking at the feature film, you know, they've announced it, so they're definitely focusing on that, and, uh, you know, who knows what will happen, you know, after that, you know, maybe they'll get to that point, and fans will be like, ah, oh, yeah, more Deathstroke, more Deathstroke, you know, and if somebody asked me to, to do a, a TV series, you know, I'd... I, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I definitely wouldn't want to, to sit in the PG arena. You know, I, I think, I think really to pay a homage to Deathstroke independently, you'd want to go hard. You know, but uh, but Joe's got a shot at that. You know, and uh, you know, I'd like to. You know, I'm really keen to see how gritty that 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 script is going to be. You know, like that Deathstroke script for the film is. Uh, I wonder what its rating is going to be. You know, it'd be great if it was R rated. Oh, yeah. And it'd be great if it was like Logan. You know, it'd be great if it was heavy. You know really heavy you know but uh, you know that's where we get to see I'm, I'm probably just as excited as everybody else to, to think like what's that gonna look like on a big screen you know wish it was me Joe <laughs> 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 but good luck uh, no, he's, no, Joe's a really wonderful guy and, uh, and he'll, you know, he'll have his shot at it now you know? the Batman mask's been worn by plenty of people so you know so be it You've had a, a really great range of characters in your career on TV and film. Is there anything that you haven't been able to do yet, any sorts of characters or anything that you'd really like to be able to have a go at? Well, you know, I, I'm kind of like, I, I, I've kind of got a music and a dance background and a, and a few things that are probably, probably my, my involvement in the arts was, was not the tough guy, yeah. you know, originally, you know, like I was, a, I was in, you know, I, I I wrote music, piano music, you know, and uh, and did ballet and, and dance, you know, and uh, and these softer expressions are kind of like part of part of my character. But I, I do think I flush them out in characters, but I, I sort of end up using them as secondary layers that help develop the character in the audience's mind, you know, like like Crixus, you know. I came on so hard with Crixus that my, my director walked up to me, sorry, the producer uh, of our show, Spartacus, walked up and said, Manu, what are you doing with Crixus? Nobody likes him. He's like so arrogant and unlikable. And, and, like, and I was like, I know. Just trust me, trust me. Because, you know, it's... it's, it's and, and the reason I, I played it like that was because, you know, the reason I got into, into acting in the first place was, uh, you know, I, I, I lost my mother and brother in two separate car accidents. And I was in the accident with my mother, and uh, and I was in a coma for like two weeks in a hospital. And when I woke up, you know, uh, the you know, my worst enemy, the guy who was my worst enemy, was was at the hospital, and to come to see me. And uh, you know, he'd lost his mother when he was younger, and uh, related to this moment that I was having. So even though he was my worst enemy, he came to me because of common circumstance. And all of a sudden, him and me formed a bond and became best friends. 
Now, that's what I infused into Crixus and Spartacus. When I, when I saw how that story was going to flesh out, I, I, I went, I know this story already. But it doesn't start off pretty. It starts off as enemies. And it starts off with one of the characters, one of them's playing the protagonist on the screen, then one of them, one of them has to play the antagonist hard. So I went in re really hard playing Crixus as the antagonist. And everyone was like, oh, we hate him. Hope he dies. You know, da, da 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 But to be able to turn people's feelings around, like my feelings were turned around for this, for this friend of mine in the hospital, my enemy who became my friend, to be able to do that to people, to have them hating somebody and to have them turn around completely and, and potentially cry when I died. You know, I've, I've met men who say they cried in that scene, but they say they hated me in the beginning. And to be able to win people's emotions over like that, I think opens up possibilities, you know. And whenever I'm playing a, 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 a villain-esque kind of character, you know, like Slade Wilson as well, you know, I always try to infuse vulnerability, you know, uh, suppressed emotions, you know. Even when it's when the other characters aren't looking, you just have this moment where you go deep inside of yourself and just sit in that pocket. And I know what that pocket is, you know. I've had loss in my life, so I know the feeling. Funny thing is, I have a lot of people from things like you know, I have military people from like who've been in Afghanistan and have got PTSD, and they come up to me and they go, "Bro, you know, we watched Spartacus when we were up in up in fighting in the in the mountains, you know, isolated and lost several of our team, you know, in a firefight, and you know, but but you know, we all would get around and watch Spartacus. Story keeps people bonded together, and Spartacus was this sort of story that they related to. Yeah. And here I am standing in front of these real warriors, these real soldiers, who are pouring their heart out to me, saying like, oh, we really connected with Crixus, you know? And I think to myself, how do I do that on a television show? But the thing is, as an artist, you know, I had my brother died in my hands, to be honest, you know, died in my hands. So I know that feeling, and I can put that in as an artist into my performance. You know, I reserve it for that. That's, that's my safe place for it. You know, but you know, I think it's important that as an artist, you kind of like you have to know life. You know, you have to be honest. You have to be upfront, and, and as much as you can give, give. You know, and uh, you know, I, I try to do that with my characters. You know, I, I, and at the end of the day, you know, when I come to these conventions and stuff like that, you know, and I come face to face with the fans, I realize that that's what they kind of take in through that screen. You know, and one thing that's very interesting about all of that that I found out last year was I went to Greece and I, w I went to a place called Epidavros. And in Epidavros, they, they built the very first amphitheater. The people who built it were called the Escipio. The Escipio were a, a medicine people that uh, made apotheki and stuff like that. So they, they were into making medicines and they were well known throughout Europe and they would travel a lot with their, with their medicines and, and teaching about medicine. And they built an amphitheater. The first one that was ever built was built in Epidavros. And it was built because they believed that voice and storytelling was healing. When I heard that, I suddenly felt this huge relief that I wasn't just caught up in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, that I actually had an ancient reason for being in the place that I am. You know, to, to, you know when that person with PTSD comes to me and I can say, yeah, brother, you know, my brother died in my hands as well. And in this art form, we made a, an emotional connect across the void through a television screen, you know? But it was healing, you know? And, and, and that's valuable to me, really valuable, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that with us, Manny. Thank you so much for your time. No worries, guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Cheers.